What's going on YouTube? This is Boxing Wave. I gotta speak about this one last time. <laughs> I said the last time was gonna be the last time, but then there was a lot of things that's happened in the last few days. A lot of information has come out. Um, a lot of changes in opinion. Uh, and then I want to respond to some people, some comments, and I want to bring up some of the other people that had a lot to say about this fight. Before I get to Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford and their fight, um, you know, speak on Mick Conlon fighting Lopez and uh, Lee Wood fighting Mauricio Lara this weekend, I want to speak on this one last time. Okay, hopefully one last time. Um, and that's Lomachenko and Devin Haney. Okay. Um, first, let's start out with the... First of all, if you are new... I'm just going to make the assumptions. You never watched my video before. I my stance was Haney winning a close decision against Lomachenko. Okay, on the night of the fight, uh, I scored it for Devin Haney seven rounds to five. Uh, but I said on here that it can really go either way because I had a, a few swing rounds in a fight. So you know, if it goes seven five Haney, seven five Loma. I, was, I thought that was fair. That was a night of fight. After the rewatch, though, uh, I was pushing more on Haney, you know, uh, getting a close win. All right. I think one of the rounds that I gave to Haney, uh, or I didn't give to Haney before, I gave to Haney after the, 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 the rewatch. Um, I watched it one more time since then, simply because. People were sending me these videos, uh, these edited uh, punch count videos that were uh, pro Lomachenko punch count videos. So I watched it one more time and I was watching a little bit compared to the punch count videos that people were sending me. And um, I realized that I don't like watching edited versions of the fight because the fight is live when we watch it the fight is live when the judges score it right uh, when the punch count because everybody's throwing up talking about the punch count those are counted while the fight is actively happening it's not being slowed down there's no instant replay there's nothing and the problem with these punch count videos is do you guys think that those can be biased too? I do. I saw two. I saw a few. No, I saw more than two. Um, I saw a, a Devin Haney one too. But um, I saw two that were, you know, pro Loma. You know, and I watched the two back to back. And I realized that, you know, people swear by these two videos that these are legit, legitimate and accurate. But... If you notice that the two of them are completely different. And I'm talking about the punch that they count as being landed punches. There's one channel that um, he's done this before. I've seen his video before uh, when it came. I believe it was Manny Pacquiao and uh, uh, Jeff Horn. But this is a, a, a Manny Pacquiao channel. It's a Manny Pacquiao fan channel. Um, and the only other two fighters that in the last five years or so that I've seen him make contact on is Vasil Lomachenko and Gennady Golovkin. All right. He did the same for Golovkin and Canelo. So he's a fan of those three fighters. He's a Golovkin fan. He's a Lomachenko fan. And he's a, a extreme Manny Pacquiao fan. 90% of his content is Manny Pacquiao. So it would only make sense for him to slow it down and count the punches and skip to the punches that I landed and be pro Lomachenko, you know, but I watched not all of it, but I watched some of it. And, um, I realized after watching that and the other one, the other channel was a gaming channel. He's never done any videos on anything boxing related. He's a, he's a video game channel. Um, but he were to come, he came out and made a couple of videos about how Loma was robbed and did a video himself. And his is different because he's narrating through it. But he's telling you what is happening from his view 
while he's showing the video and slowing down the punches that are landed. And he is beautiful left hand from Lola Hage. Beautiful left hook from Lola Macheco. Straight right hand. It's great. Um, when it comes to Devin Haney, you know, Haney barely lands the left or the right to the body. Barely, you know, Haney is, is, you know what I mean? I'm like watching and I'm like, ah. And then when you watch both of them, one is, it's like one is counting punches that the other one is not counting. <laughs> and people are sending this to me as in, you guys are trying to change my view on a fight. I, I have my own eyes and ears. I can watch the fight for myself. Uh, I don't need anyone to, like, I get it. You guys have different views and opinion. I know a lot of you pick Loma, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not. It's the robbery. It's the term robbery that was used that I disagree with. That was my argument from the beginning. I never argued about Lomachenko winning the fight. As far as like, I have no problems. Or my problem has never been against people that pick Lomachenko. It's the word robbery that was used in a very close fight. Because people are saying 7-5, seven, 7-5 five, seven, five Loma, you know, or at bare minimum a draw. So it was a robbery. And I'm like... You're not even showing your own card. You know, you're basically saying everything is an option except for Devin Haney winning the fight and calling it a robbery. That's my stance on it. That's always been my stance this whole week. All right. Um, so, you know, the punch count videos, uh, you know, blood, shout out to Blood Boss because he made one that was like a pro Devin Haney one, but he's not. Like he said, he's not an expert at the video editing thing. He kind of like just let the fight play. And I think he was just trying to expose the commentary who weren't, weren't even acknowledging anything that Devin Haney landed. You know what I'm saying? He, they weren't even acknowledging it. You know, and I watched, I realized that when I watched it on a rewatch, I'm like, oh man, these guys are just anything Loma, Loma, Lomachenko, Lomachenko, Lomachenko. The commentary is 80% Lomachenko, you know? And I think that can have an influence on a viewer, you know, because you listen to Tim Bradley, you listen to Andre Ward, you listen to these experts on the sport. And you don't think that a fighter can be biased. Another thing is, too, you know, a lot of you guys have sent me comments talking about who said what. Uh, Terrence Crawford, Keyshawn Davis, Tim Bradley, uh, Shakur Stevenson. You're sending me all of these black fighters that thought Lomachenko won a fight. I brought that up in my own video. You know, it's not like I'm trying to hide it. I, I, I understand how they feel about the fight. All right. But um, a lot of people made videos and content on social media, posted stuff on social media. Um, you know, we saw Nelly, the rapper. He's, you know, super famous. He's a boxing fan. Yeah, he's like he's done with boxing. He went on a rant in, in the arena that night. Um and you know, there's another guy that I'm I'm familiar with. His name is Goods the Animal. I'm a big fan of him. He's a battle rapper. Uh, he made he decided to make content on how Lomachenko got robbed. Um, but he was another guy like Tim Bradley, like Shakur Stevenson, that followed up after the rewatch, saying that they have a different view on the fight. And that was my point of this whole thing. Even guys like Tim Bradley and Shakur Stevenson can rewatch the fight. I know Shakur didn't say that he thinks Devin Haney won the fight, but you went from saying that the fight was a robbery and the fight was an 8 4 fight to going back and saying um, it was a draw or possibly a 7 5. 7 5 to Loma. No, he thought 7 5 for Loma or maybe a draw. Or maybe a draw. But you went and said robbery. And you have one of the biggest influences on this fight because not only that you had a relationship with Devin Haney, you guys grew up fighting in the amateurs together. And you guys are on a collision course of fighting each other. 
<clears throat> and you may possibly fight Lomachenko in the near future, you have major influence on how people feel about this fight. You, they took an incredible photo of you at staring at Devin Haney at in the ring after the fight. Uh, it's gone viral. It's one of the best boxing photos I've seen in recent years uh, because you are on the hunt for Devin Haney. All right, but people act like a fighter can't have a bias in their pick. You know, like people are biased. You know, especially when they have, you know, like when you're against the fighter, you know, I mean, Keyshawn Davis have been throwing shots at Devin Haney for the past past six months or so on social media, on everything. You know, you think he doesn't have some sort of influence on how he looks at the fight. You know what I mean? He's He doesn't like Devin Haney. So him saying that he thought Devin Haney clearly lost, he might feel that way. He might have saw the fight and believe that, but he has a history. There's a track record of him disliking this guy. So Tim Bradley has come out and said that his views are changed. And he's the, the other guy that I think has a major influence because he does the commentary. But he's allowed to have a change in opinion. Shakur Stevenson is allowed to change. I mean, we all do. We all do. We can all rewatch a fight and say, um, I think the fight was closer than I thought I previously thought. This happened to me. You know what happened to me with Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia? I walked out of that arena thinking that, you know, there's a possibility that Danny Garcia might have gotten robbed. Or it, it or I thought the fight was closer. You know, I don't know robbery if this is what I said at that time, but I know I walked out of that arena thinking that, you know, Danny Garcia might have won that one. You know, that fight was close. Then when I watched it again on fight, I was like, no, Keith Thurman clearly won this fight. It was competitive. But Keith Thurman clearly won the fight. But you're in the arena. And, you know, and in that night, I remember Keith Thurman getting booed. I remember sitting around people that were against Keith Thurman. You know, it happens all of the time. Jamel Charlo, the Charlo twins on the same card fighting um, Tony Harrison and uh, Matt Korobov that night. Yo, the crowd, what, you know... Sometimes you got to go back and rewatch the fight because being in the arena, everybody was looking at each other when the decisions came down. Like, did they both lose tonight? You know, it's just that's what happens. Paulie Malinaji. Paulie Malinaji has taken the position of being the white boxer. That's anti-black at this point. Not just for this fight, but he's 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 made comments before, um, and that's that's pretty much the reason why he's got canned at Showtime. I've been on here and said to you guys that Pauli Malinaji is a phenomenal boxing analyst. When it comes to him breaking the fighters down from a technical standpoint, he's the best. Or one of the best. Unfortunately, he cannot get his racial and political views out of the way. And it it voids his boxing opinion. Because he can't separate the two. His views are too racially influenced. Alright? His political views are too extreme. He's a radical. He's a radical far right guy. And I don't like radical far left or right people because they just can't see the other side of any argument from the other side. I don't talk about politics on here, but those are the two groups that once they start talking and they start going off and I'm like, yeah, but what about, oh, no, 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 this is. I can't have a conversation with you. That's how I am. 
Like, that's just how I am. I don't, I just don't even talk politics with people anymore. But Paulie Malinaji, he's gone out and not even, he's led the, the, the army of the radical white boxing fans or non-black boxing fans that, that hate black boxers. He's led that group. By coming out and saying things like, uh, if you pick Devin Haney, if you're that small percentage of black boxing fans that pick Devin Haney, you're just going against the white boy. And then went on and like put a stamp on, oh, by the way, Devin Haney got re-signed to top rank two nights ago before the fight. Like, gotcha. Like, this... And guess what? Everybody ran with it. He even came back to my channel and let me know that Bob screwed over Devin uh, Lomachenko because they were re-signing him anyway. That's what Paulie did. But I saw the video and I didn't think any of it. This is Paulie being Paulie. I mean, this is the first. I mean, this is the guy that a few years ago, he went out of his way to say that it's over for the Africa. It's no longer the time of the African-American boxer. Why would you come out and make that comment? Why would you come out and say that? You went out of your own way to make that comment. That means everything you say is void. Again, you have a lot of boxing knowledge. Obviously, you have the experience. You're like a two-division champ. You know what I mean? I know who you are. I've been following you from your whole career. You're from Brooklyn. How can I not? I know who you are. But you clearly, clearly have an issue with black fighters. With black people in general. You know, I went on and saw your little rant on uh, Steve Kim's uh, podcast with Mario Lopez. Uh, you guys were on there and you just took it too far when it came to the George Floyd thing. You know, I get it. You know, <laughs> Joy, and I know I'm going into, but I, I got to get it on this guy. This guy, he just takes it too fucking far. The level of disrespect the man is dead. It doesn't matter what he did to lead up. Yeah, the dude had a drug issue, obviously. All right, but call him a crackhead and all of this shit. It's just, what's your problem? What is your problem? The man is dead. You don't, you don't talk about people like that. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happened that led to that moment. There's no reason, there's no way you can justify a guy keeping his knee on your neck for eight minutes long. It doesn't matter if he's a junkie or whatever you were saying. He clearly has a problem. But you guys are still using this guy as to justify your views. On black fans that pick Haney to win. Told you in the last video. All of the times that I thought Lomachenko was. Uh, I don't have a problem. I love Lomachenko. You know what I'm saying? But I'll, I'll call his bullshit out. And I've called it out. Just like I did here. I don't have a problem with Lomachenko. You guys know that. But there's a lot of these guys that has never been here before that's just coming in and seeing that I'm black and seeing that I thought Haney won the fight, you know. Um, and it's because I'm black. Of course. Like, I've never picked the white guy over the black guy in a fight before. You know what I'm saying? Andre Ward is my one of my favorite all-time fighters. He's in my personal top 20. And I don't think he beat Kovalev in the first fight. I thought it was close. I didn't think Ward won. I don't think he, I thought it was 7-5 Kov. And then you had the knockdown. I'm not afraid of saying that. And you got these fake uh, pro-black uh, fight fans that like to come here 
Yeah. I'm going to address you guys for the last time because you guys look like you like to jump on opportunities. There are people, both black, white, or whatever, that love to like search on YouTube or the boxing community here. And they're looking for a racial angle in every conversation. I've never been that, but they are looking for it. They, they feed off of it because they have their own problems in their own mind. There's no doubt that there's racism when it comes to boxing. <laughs> Just because I made that video the last time, it might have been the first time you guys seen me talk about it when it comes to the black people, but it's not the first time I talked about it. When it comes to black folks, where were you when I was talking about Tim Bradley and racism when he uh, was getting attacked by Manny Pacquiao? Where were you when I was defending Deontay Wilder in the Pavekin situation, calling out these racist channels that always are always jumping on black fighters whenever I fail a drug test? But as soon as Pavekin fails one and then fails another after that, all these guys are finding ways to defend them. Why? Because of clearly the color of his skin. Where were you when uh, Errol Spence doing the same damn thing? I made videos on Errol Spence defending him. Because you got Gennady Golovkin. Everybody's praising him for getting all these stoppages. This is before Canelo. They're praising him. He's stopping guys. He doesn't seem like, you know, he's getting hit from punches. He's not slowing down the fights, you know. But Errol Spence coming up doing the same thing, stopping Algeria. This is way before he won a championship. And they're both, I made a video comparing them both of them. Basically saying they're doing the same thing. But you have non-black content creators Calling out Errol Spence, saying that he's possibly on drugs. Look at his nipples. This content, these videos are still up. Where were you? I've been talking about this shit. Now, am I sitting here yelling and screaming and ranting and raving in every video about racism? No, because this is a boxing channel. This is not a racial discussion channel. That's not me. It's never been me. So you got these guys that love to come around every once in a while and bring out, well, you ain't had that same energy for Wilder a couple years ago. Listen, it's clear. Wilder fought Tyson Fury by choice. He brought his career back to life. You gave, you made a decision to give Tyson Fury an opportunity at the title you guys fought to a draw all right you fought to a draw and then you went and fought him in a rematch got your ass kicked right all your fans said it was due to the gloves right so now you're basically begging for an opportunity to fight him in a rematch i mean even though you guys agreed to it and there was uh you know in contract to do a rematch okay but it was because of the way that you were stopped and again, the pandemic happened and we were talking about whether the contract was voided. Tyson Fury was trying to fight AJ. You had all that stuff going on. And Wilder is like, look, man, I gave you the opportunity. I treated you like a brother. You even went on your his own Twitter and said that you knew I was getting paid more to fight AJ when I fought you. He said it, not his fans. He said it himself. And it went on to fight Fury for a third time and got stopped again. No glove gate. But used racism as a way to sell the fight. You brought race into it. You made 17 excuses on why you lost the rematch. On top of the glove gate situation. And then you made it about black and white. But you see them out in Saudi Arabia. And this guy with Joseph Park and his boys. They're making fun of you. 
And you're going on here, ah, peace, peace, blessings, blessings, hugging them and all that, smiling. You treat a racist like that? My argument was you and AJ were both champions, black champions. If you're so pro-black, why didn't you fight Anthony Joshua? Why didn't you give another black fighter the opportunity? Since you're using that angle, why not go there? Why give Tyson Fury the, the title shot and treat him like a brother? That's what he said out of his own mouth. But you guys like to come back over here. Why? I don't know why you come over here. And I don't mean black guys. I'm talking about... I'm, it's, it's plenty of black... It's plenty of black boxing fans here. I'm talking about... You extremely... You extremely insecure motherfuckers, man. Stay away from me. Stop coming back here talking about Wilder when nobody's talking about Wilder right now. Stop coming back here with your insecurity issues. It's just ridiculous, bro. We can't have a joy, a good fight. I'm going to close this out. That was a really, really good fight. As a fact, the, the second and third time that I went back and watched the fight, I really enjoyed the fight. Ended up being way more, it ended up being way more entertaining than I thought from from first viewing. You know, it's probably because I'm giving commentary. I'm more trying to, you know, give you guy the punch from punches and stuff like that. Give you my scorecards. And when I actually had time to sit down and just watch it and enjoy it as a fan without reading comments and not, you know, I'm just enjoying it. It was a really, really good fight. And it was ruined. And Devin Haney, in my opinion, got robbed. He got robbed. He got robbed of his credibility. Because you got all of these fighters, a lot of them that's changed their opinions, you know, you think that. Shakur Stevenson is going to say that Devin Haney won when he already called it a robbery. No, he doesn't want to completely expose himself and his changes. But, I mean, for him to go back and saying that the fight was possibly a draw from saying it was a robbery originally, it says a lot. It says a lot. You know, even if you think Loma still might have edged the fight, it's a totally different view after watching, after the rewatch. And they robbed him of his win. You know? It's a credible win. And Lomachenko has come out and said that he gave away the last round. How? Why? Why would you do that? When are we going to hold accountable? When are you going to hold anything Lomachenko does? Hold him accountable for anything he does? Stop giving away the last rounds. What do you mean you gave away the last round? You thought you was up. You gave away the last round? You already said you got robbed twice before. You already said that you think you won every fight. How do you give up the 12th round? On two judges' scorecards, the fight would have been a draw if you won the 12th round. It's just like, you guys got to just ignore all of this stuff? Like, come on. I, again, if you think Loma won, I, I don't care. That's fine. It was a close fight. But you can't just ignore all of this bullshit that's going on. You know, Paulie used something that was totally wrong. It was false. It was a lie. And you guys... Go and run with it. He says, this guy re-signed with top rank. Oh, it was clear it's a robbery now because Bob and top rank, was, they already knew that they were going to keep Haney. Yo, it was a lie. Haney has already said that. It's, it's, it's not true. I'm not re-signed with top rank. What is Paulie? But you guys will run with that. You ran with it. He got robbed. If anybody got robbed, he got robbed. It's crazy. 
all this stuff. They didn't even show anything coming from Lomachenko's corner in the fight. What was going on with that broadcast? That broadcast was ridiculous. Extremely biased broadcast. And he still got the decision. You know? And the Dave Moretti scorecard, listen. I'm gonna end it with this. I don't is he had his 80 to 4, but it's the rounds he selected is all over the place. You know, they're all over the place. You know, it's not an I don't for both ends. You know, not just the tenth round for being for Haney, but just the amount of rounds he gave in the first six rounds, I just don't agree with. I don't agree with the card at all, but that's his scorecard, man. You know, I do think the fight was close. I think Haney won the fight. I'm not mad at the idea of having a rematch. You know, they're going to fight for it and they're going to try to push it. You know, uh, Loma's manager, uh, Teddy Atlas, all of these people are pushing for a rematch. Um, this, again, this is not a robbery to me. But if they're going to push it, then they're going to push it. But let's be real. And the sad thing about this whole thing is that it's all about race. All of this is about, it exposes how much race really matters when it shouldn't. You know? So anyway, um, I think I'm done. All right? Y'all have a good day. And I'll, I'll be back really soon with uh, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. All right, see ya. Peace.